Everywhere we look these days, people are asking questions. Questions about money, better health, a new job, inner peace, or the meaning of life. Real answers are tough to find and sometimes very painful. And even though you may be experiencing some of that pain, there is a better way. And although it may seem like there's no place on earth that can satisfy those needs, there is a place where pain becomes power, where hurt becomes healing, and where failure is turned into victory. Hello, I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Our church is not just a building, it's a place where people from all races, denominations, and walks of life make contact with the greatest power in the universe, the power of Jesus Christ. Join me during the next 30 minutes and discover why Lakewood Church is here for you with real answers for the real needs you're facing every day. For over 55 years, John Osteen has touched the lives of individuals around the world. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, an international training center teaching people to use God's Word to overcome life's everyday challenges. A local church with a worldwide vision, Lakewood is dedicated to helping people in America and over 100 nations of the world. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with Pastor John and Dodie Osteen at the Oasis of Love, a place where miracles happen and lives are changed. We welcome you today. We're so glad you've tuned in. We're going to teach you and preach to you the Word of the Living God. Amen. And I have a scripture that you'll like. This is in the Living Bible, the 146th Psalm. And it says, The God who made both earth and heaven, the seas and everything in them, He is the God who keeps every promise. And when you go outside, when you go home today, you look at the beautiful trees, the earth, and you go down to Galveston, you look at the water, all that God made. So if you, you think that if he made all that, then he couldn't keep a promise to his child whom he loves dearly. So whatever you have for God that may be too hard for you, it's not too hard for him. So the God who made all these beautiful things for us to enjoy, he will keep every promise. So ask him and he'll do it for you because he loves you. Amen. Can we have an amen? amen? All right. I welcome all of you who are viewing by television. Remember, we're here for you. Everybody say that. We're here for you. Here. Wherever you are, suffering, sighing, crying, dying, hurting humanity, we're here to help you. <clears throat> and you know, you that live in the Houston area and driving distance, I encourage you to come out here. I'll tell you, a lot happens here in Lakewood Church that you don't see on television. So we invite you to come and be with us here at Lakewood Church. Could I have a good amen? amen? Let's hold up our Bibles and make our confession. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. I am what he says I am. I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. For the sake of the television audience, we are reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, beginning to read with verse 10. It's concerning Jacob. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward the harem. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed a dream and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, and I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Jacob wakened out of sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid. And he said, how dreadful or how awesome is this place. There's, this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. 
Jacob rose up early in the morning and he took stone, the stone that he had put for his pillars and he set it up as a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, which means house of God. And Jacob bowed a vow and saying, if the Lord will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give to me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I've set for a pillar shall be God's house and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Could I have an amen? amen? Now, of course, most of you here know that we're preaching a series of messages on mastering your money. These are treacherous days in which we live. We need to evangelize our cities. They're filled with gangs. They're filled with violence. We need to help every area of society in our own land. But we need to reach out to a world that's lost here and abroad. So we have lost what we call seven years of harvest. 1994 through 2000, seven years of intense harvesting the precious fruit of the earth. God said he waits for the precious fruit of the earth. The only thing going to heaven are people. That's the only thing going to heaven. That's the treasure we'll have in heaven. The men and the women and the young people that we have won to the Lord Jesus Christ through our prayers, through our giving, through our efforts. We have set a goal of reaching, uh, of having $5 million in 1994 alone over and above our tithes to give out to help reach the nations of the world. Could I have an amen? amen? See, God not only wants us to do that, but he said, I want to bless you. I want your finances to be in order. I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm against poverty. I'm against poverty. I was raised in poverty. I'm well acquainted with poverty. And I know that uh, if you have to choose between poverty and riches, I, I know you choose riches. It is not a sign of humility to be poor. But it's not a sign that God doesn't love you if you're poor. God loves the rich and the poor, but God wants to elevate us. He wants us to be able to pay our debts. He wants us to be able to raise our families. He wants to bless us financially. But you will never be blessed financially till you get in line with God. Now here's a man. He called this place where, you know, where he met God. He called it the house of God. What constitutes a house of God? Well, we have it right here in the very first part of the Bible. What a house of God in every generation ought to look like. It ought to be like. First of all, a house of God is a place where sinners are welcome. Jacob was a vile deceiver. He was a mean person. He, uh, he was on the run. And uh, he was a hated man. His brother was after him to kill him. And uh, here this wicked sinner comes. And that's what, that's what we ought to realize. The, the, the church is not a, a museum to display perfect people. The church is a hospital to mend people, to get them healed. The church is a place where suffering, sighing, crying, dying, demon-possessed, devil-oppressed people can come and be welcome and get help from Almighty God. So a church ought to be, ought to be a place where sinners come. And then it was a place where heaven was real. Heaven was real. I tell you, you saw that letter. Lived it up there, and, and God was at the top, and there was heaven. I tell you, heaven is a real planet. Heaven is a real planet. I'll tell you what's not going to be there. No sighing, no crying, no dying, no tears, no suffering, no pain, no death. So a, a church, it ought to be a place not only where sinners are, but where heaven is real. Where we get our eyes off of time and get it on eternity. Heaven is real. And then uh, it's a place where God... Uh, reveals himself as a giver. God said to Jacob, he said, I, I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to give you this land. When you come to church, a real church, you find out that God is not the one that takes away. He's the one that gives. God so loved the world that he gave. God's trying to give you eternal life. God's trying to give you freedom from your sins. God's trying to break the shackles and give you freedom out of chains. God's trying to give you something. That's what a church house ought to, house of God ought to be. It ought to be a place where God's message goes out. 
that he's a great giver. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. He's a giver. Jesus said, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together. God is a giver. When you come to this church, you find out God is a giver. Amen. Could I have an amen? amen? And then it's a place where angels are present. Angels, you notice, were ascending and descending from heaven. They were not descending and ascending. Their beginning point was on earth and not in heaven. They were ascending and they were descending. So a church ought to be a place where angels join hands with us. The angel of the Lord had kept round about them that fear him. The angel of the Lord chases the wicked. The angel of the Lord rescues us from destruction. Thank God they hearken unto the word of God. A house of God ought to be a place where God and man are joined together financially. Jacob said, of all that you give me, I'm going to give the tenth unto you. Can't you imagine out there in a pasture? He begins to think about giving. And then uh, it's a place where the laws of increase begin to happen in people's lives. Jacob got to be a rich man because he vowed a vow to God. So you see, God wants this to be a house of God. Could I have an amen? amen? I want you to notice that Jacob out there in the middle of nowhere, nobody preaching to him, nobody begging him to do it, but because of his grandfather and because of, but because of his father and his grandfather, he made a decision when God encountered him out there. God met this runaway. God met this sinner on the run. God wants to meet you wherever you are. You can't outrun God. God's going to catch up with you every time. And what's he going to do to you? Send you to hell? No, he's going to bless you. He said all these blessings will overtake you. So, so we think about Jacob. He's out there in this uh, barren land, and uh, he vows a vow to give one-tenth of his income to God. Did you know that Jacob gave his heart to Jesus right there in that barren spot? He said, if you're going to be with me, if you're going to do all these things for me, if you're going to do this, that, and the other, then this God shall be my God. And did you notice that the very moment he made God his God on the basis of his great blessings that God was going to give him, he said, I'm going to tithe 10% of everything God gives me. Every newborn child of God ought to make a vow or make a promise he's going to give God 10% of everything God gives him. And then notice here, he made this decision when he was yet poor. He didn't have anything he didn't have anything but a staff. So you don't have to have a lot of money to make up your mind that you're going to be a giver, a tither, share offerings to evangelize the world. He had nothing but a staff. Very poor man. But he said this, God, everything you give me, I'll give you the first tenth. He made the most important decision of his life to make God his God. And then he said, I'm going to honor God with my money. We're talking about mastering your money. It's not money that's evil. It's the love of money. It's the love of money. Notice he made a decision to tithe when he had nothing. Notice that God blessed him. Over in the 32nd chapter, verse 10, it says this. It says, after many years, he came back. He had nothing but a staff. He came back. He had so many cows, so many camels, so many sheep, and so many this, that, and the other. He was a very rich man. God said, get up and go back to Bethel. And Jacob said, oh, Lord, God of my father Abraham and the God of my father Isaac, the God that said unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of your mercies. Now, listen, God shows mercy to those tithers. I'm not, I'm not worthy of the least of your mercies and of all the truth which thou hast shown unto me. God gives revelation truth to those who honor him with their money. You don't buy it. It's just that you're right with God. Now he said this, with nothing but my staff, that stick, nothing but my staff, I passed over this Jordan. And now, look at me. I'm rich. I have two bands. 
I walked over there with nothing but a stick, but I had a vow in my God, in my heart that I would honor God with my money, that I would give 10% of my income to God's work, that I would do what God told me to do. And now, Lord, after many years, look at me. I've given the 10%, but I'm blessed. I'm too bad. I'm well off. Glory be to God. That's what I want to happen to you. You may not have anything but a stick. But I'll tell you, if your heart cries out, God, I want to do something for suffering humanity. I want to be a tither. I want to be a giver. I'll tell you, God will bless you. Yeah, he'll bless you. Don't make that decision unless you want to be blessed. Now notice the basis on which he made the decision. The Lord said, I will be with you wherever you go. I'll keep you wherever you go. I'll, I'm going to see that you come back here in good health and in strength. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do the other. And Jacob picked up on that and he said, Lord, if you will surely be with me, if you'll, if you'll take care of me and give me bread to eat and raiment to wear, if you'll do all these wonderful things that I'm going to tithe. When you think about, think about what God's done for you. Far more than he did for, for Jacob. Think about, we think about God's salvation here in this church. Think about that we've been delivered from the power of darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Thank God it's a small thing to give God 10% of our money. Thank God the Bible says broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in their act. But narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. Broad is the way, many find it. Narrow is the way, few there be that find it. When I think about just a few people in the world compared to all the people who have lived, just a few people will be saved. I'm so grateful I'm saved. I'm so glad I've been delivered. I'm so glad Jesus is my Lord. I'm glad my children are in the kingdom of God. I'm glad I'm among the few. I gladly give my money 10% and more in offerings to, to spread such good news about such a good God. Amen. Could I have an amen? amen? Notice, he did it on the basis of what God had given. Listen, folks, God is bringing you to a city whose streets are made out of gold. Don't worry about the tithe, give it. Don't worry about offerings, give them. He's taking you to a city where one pearl is a door. He's bringing you to a city where there is no death, no sighing, no crying, no dying, no pain, no funeral parlors, no hearses, no rent to pay. Hallelujah. We got a mansion debt free. Hallelujah. You see, when you realize what God has done for you, you ought to be glad to share what we call money down here. Amen. Let's shake ourselves loose. And uh, I encourage the people in this church, when we think about evangelizing the world, evangelizing Houston, evangelizing Texas, and the United States, I encourage them to stretch their faith. You, you watch us now. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to stretch our faith. Do it again. We're going to stretch. You're not stretching enough. Come on. Now stretch our faith. See, our faith is little, but we're going to stretch it. We're going to dare to believe God to help us do more than we ever dreamed we could do. Could I have an amen? amen. All right. Now let me talk about, you know, today God has local churches. That's his plan. Local churches need support, and those local churches need to not be ingrown, me and my four no more. They need to reach out like we do to unwed mothers, to motorcycle gangs, to food banks, to all kind of prison outreaches, street outreaches, all down at the, uh, at the port of Houston where the world comes to us. We reach out there uh, in a ministry and touch all those seamen. But you see, we need to reach out beyond our own doors to people who have never yet heard the name of Jesus. All right. We should not expect the world to financially fund the church. The world is not going to fund the church. The world is going to fund itself. And we ought not to be begging on street corners for the world to help us. I remember one time years ago, Brother Bell and I, we think about building that first building over there. Somebody took us. Said, well, we, maybe, maybe there's a bunch of worldly people over here. They got a big warehouse. Maybe they'll give you this steel. So we went over there, beer cans everywhere, all this massive steel up there. 
And uh, so we walked around, saw all the trash, saw all the steel and everything, you know, and we thought it might be a good thing, you know, to start out with. We'd get all this superstructure here and, and maybe start a church over here. And so uh, God spoke to me. Brother Bell came to me and said, what do you think, Brother Osteen? I said, God spoke to me. He said, what did, you say? what did he say to you? I tell you, if God ever spoke to me, he spoke to me standing in that dirty place. He said this, what are the sons of the Most High God doing in this filthy place asking for the world's castoffs? <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I tell you, Brother Bell said, that's enough for me. Let's get out of here. <laughs> we marched out. We built church after church after church. And we don't depend on the world. God's people are good enough to give to finance the kingdom. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. But, but you see, God does not expect the world. Who's going to finance the, the spread of the gospel? Who's going to finance television? Who's going to finance outreaches? It's got to be God's people. Yeah. And if they're stingy and love money and little in their vision and steal from God, what a tragedy to live in such a generation that we're living in. God says, you keep the nine dimes and just give me the first one. And you reach out and grab that one dime until it's, man, oh, I don't know who's on a dime, but he hollers when you squeeze it. <laughs> Stealing from God on your way to heaven. Stealing from God on, the, on your way to streets of gold. Stealing from God on your way to where there's no death, no sign, no crying. I believe God's people are going to rise up all over this world and help evangelize it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a good amen. amen. All right. Now, let me, give you, let me give you seven reasons for tithing real quickly. Number one, tithing and giving offerings is God's plan. His wisdom thought of it. Number two... Tithing and giving offerings is God's plan to finance the local churches and all the outreaches. That's how God planned it. Number three, tithing and giving offering is God's secret plan to bless his own people. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Number four, God's plan is to help you keep him first. When he gets you to tithe, that helps you keep him first in your life. Number number five, it's God's plan to keep your attention on heaven. Amen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on, on earth, Jesus said, where moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. You know, the more people we get over there on the other side in heaven, the more we think about it. I got daddy over there, mother over there, Jack's over there, my brother, and Odell's over there, and Hazel's over there. I'll tell you, I just feel like heaven's so real. But not only are they over there, I got a lot of souls that have been won through our giving and sharing. So he wants you to have heaven on your mind in the midst of all the danger you live in. Number six, God's plan is to help you lay up treasures. Lay up treasures. Not only just keep your attention, but lay up treasures and meet people there. And number seven, it's God's plan to enlist your participation in the greatest thing that's closest to his heart, and that is world evangelism, telling every soul about Jesus. Reach the unreached. Touch the, un uh, love the unlovable. And touch the untouchable. That's what it's all about. Let's join hands with God. Co-workers with God. And let's rise up in this day and let's dare to evangelize the world because there's coming a day, the night cometh when no man can work. And I want to tell the television audience, I'm telling you, God wants everybody to be a part. God wants you to be a part of your local church. God wants to be, you to be a part of what your pastor tells you to do. Let's join together and spread the gospel throughout all the world. Could I have an amen? amen. You know, what I'm talking about is for Christians. We're not asking you people for money. And I want to tell you that money can never buy what you, we offer you today. You were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Nobody can buy it. God's salvation is a gift. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God, the gift of God, the gift of God is what? Eternal life. We're not trying to give you religion. We're trying to give you eternal life. 
and it's found in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want all of you who are out there, if you don't know the Lord, or if there's any doubt, if you died right now where you would go, you can settle that fact once and for all. And we come through here with good news. There's a gift for you. God gave it. He's never taken it back. All you have to do is accept it. And that gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you just pray this simple prayer? Pray it after me. Say, oh God, I've heard about your great goodness today. I've heard about your mercy. Oh God, I know I need to be saved. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died in my place and God raised you from the dead. And Jesus, today I ask you to come into my heart and save me. I accept you right now, this very moment, as my Lord and my Savior. Let heaven make a record. Today, Jesus is my Lord, and I'm on my way to heaven. If we don't see you here, we'll see you on the other side. For more than 55 years, in more than 100 countries, and through books, tapes, and television, Pastor John Osteen has been preaching the simple truth, a truth that changes lives, heals the sick, and binds the broken, the truth of the saving and healing power of Jesus Christ. If you've enjoyed today's program or prayed that simple prayer with John Osteen, write us and let us know. Pastor Osteen always enjoys hearing from our television viewers. And if you'd like an audio or video copy of today's program, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-725-9191. Or send your check or money order to John Osteen, P.O. Box 23297, Houston, Texas, 77228. Every day, Lakewood Church touches the lives of people across this country and the world. Families brought together, young people delivered from drugs and violence, desperate circumstances changed, and lifelong dreams restored. We'd like to extend a personal invitation for you to visit Lakewood Church and experience the life-changing power of Jesus Christ and bring the entire family. We're especially excited about our children and youth programs that teach Bible principles in an atmosphere where learning is fun. Make a commitment this year to give church an important place in the life of your family. And we'll look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Lakewood Church is located at 7400 East Houston Road and can be reached conveniently from the 610 North Loop, exiting at North Wayside Drive. Just travel north two more miles and turn right on Dockle Road, which ends right here at Lakewood Church. Whether it's reaching out to more than 100 countries worldwide or changing the heart of a single person, Pastor John Osteen and the congregation of Lakewood Church are touching God by touching lives. At Lakewood Church, we're here for you. What do you do when you don't know what to do? That's what Pearl Gruden faced when her only son had hydrocephalus, fluid on the brain. Her baby had no chance and Pearl had no hope. But that's when she heard John Osteen tell about a God of hope and healing. Today, Pearl Burton believes in miracles because now her son Terry is an honor student and the hope she left behind, Lakewood Church helped her find once again. Lakewood Church, we're here for you.